The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. Carter's War is brought to you by Nosler. Up front. There once roamed over a million elephants. So common, in fact, as some naturalists believe they could never be wiped out. Yet over the years, this number has declined sharply. This is a story of greed, a story of black market trade and blood money. When people and animals collide, things are never simple. In this wildlife human conflict, I'm often called in to seek out the truth, to find out what's really happening on the front line. My name is Ivan Carter, hunter, conservationist, and wildlife investigator. On the continent of Africa, south of the Sahara Desert, there rages a war. A war cultivated by an underground trade. The epicenter of this war is a commodity that has fascinated traders for hundreds of years. White gold. Elephant ivory is one of the most valuable wildlife commodities on the planet. Its value fueled by an eastern market where its smooth texture and silky feel are highly sought after. The ivory war results in an elephant dying somewhere in Africa every 15 minutes. That's 100,000 elephants killed by poachers over the last three years alone. It's a staggering $175 million black market business. I am in Mozambique, in an unprotected wildlife area. An area where wildlife lives in close proximity with humans. Humans who've learned to make a living from the trade in animal parts. I'm here to investigate the Ivory War. As a child growing up in Africa, I was always fascinated by vultures. They were often the first clue that big cats had been in the area that there'd been a natural death worthy of investigation. The smell is quite strong here. Yeah. There could be any number of predators in the area. It's gonna be very careful, I'm just gonna be ready for this. Just never know what's in here. Knowing that this has been a target area for elephant poachers in recent weeks, I've located a possible incident. The heavy scent of rotting flesh is almost tangible, heavy and acrid in the afternoon heat. It sticks in my throat. This level of rotten decay, even with this heat, would take at least four days, possibly longer. It's important not to rush to conclusions when investigating a scene like this. Some bullet holes weeping here. We've got a bullet hole here that's rotted out. This rib has definitely been shattered. These others have been gnawed a little bit, but this one's been shattered probably by a bullet. Suggestive of a light caliber because it hasn't broken the pelvis. And then you've got some weeping bullet holes in his rump and into his guts. And as we look further back here, we've lost a lot of matter here, which has been eaten by the vultures and hyenas. And then we've got some foaming bullet holes here. Probably again, while he was lying down here, you can see these chop marks. This is an axe, where an axe is rented into here. They've taken this out in a hurry. At the speed at which they've taken this out, they haven't taken any care at all with all of that chopping. Bullet holes and missing ivory. Very typical of a Poachers modus operandi. I need to backtrack and find where this elephant was first shot at by the poachers. Looks like, just from the tracks and the sign, that he came running down here through the trees. 
He was running, he was stressed. See how these trees have literally been knocked out of the ground. They're not being killed, but they've been knocked out of the ground. Now the prevailing wind comes from this direction, which means there's no way he would have been shot at from this direction because he would have smelt his attacker. So the attacker had to be up in this direction. So we look over here and we see what cover we've got here. Where would be the perfect ambush spot? Here is a patch of ground behind this big tree. I have to think like a poacher. Somebody's laid down here. Here's where he's put his head, some dry grass. Here is exactly what I was expecting to find. Here's some brass. You look at the kink on the end of this brass, semi-automatic. So he's fired those first few shots from here. He then, I would imagine, has run forward, but I don't see any tracks. There's some more brass shining in the sun here. So one of two things has happened. He's either backed up and carried on shooting here, but he probably wouldn't have backed up. What I believe he's done is he's swung around. And based on that trajectory, he's shot into this direction. It could have been a second target that he fired at that ran in that direction. The poachers waited at a tree adjacent to where the elephants were feeding. After they shot and killed the young bull, I believe a second bull may have escaped towards a nearby riverbed. As I follow his steps backwards, I find the place where he had started to run. The way elephants go down a steep hill is they'll push their front feet down and drag their back feet. That's exactly what's happened here. Do you see how the top layer of leaves has been dragged down? Here are some leaves, you can see they're browning. Probably corresponds in time. You can see some broken branches up there. And then he's come down here, he's done exactly the same thing. Now for an elephant to go over a cliff like this, he has to be under a huge amount of stress. I think what has ended up happening is based on the size of these tracks, this is a very, very big elephant. You look at these other tracks on the riverbed, they barely imprinted an inch. Those tracks are dug deep into the riverbed and they're going in a very straight line. That's a stressed animal just running away. Now we've got a question. Did this bull just run across this river terrified? Or did this bull run across this river wounded? I have to find this bull. My name is Ivan Carter. I have, after several days, located and confirmed a poaching incident. An elephant bull, its face hacked off, is dead. But another bull has fled from the scene, and he may be wounded. After tracking the whole morning, we found a track that is clearly visible. This is the first truly identifiable track that we've seen of this bull. Elephant tracks are like their fingerprints. Once you can see and identify the individual cracks in the bottom of the track, that's gonna be your signature for that particular bull. I'm actually gonna draw that right now because it's important to be able to remember it because there's no other elephant in this area or anywhere else in Africa for that matter that has got a footprint like this. As a bull ages, his feet start to develop deep cracks. His track is very distinctive. A bull of this age could quite easily be carrying significant ivory. My partner and master tracker, Livy, guides me as we follow the tracks towards a vantage point. This thing has carried on through here, Livy. We're not gonna see him, I'm just hoping maybe we see him. The time it took to sort out the tracks the last couple of hours, he's pulled further ahead, and unless he's under these big trees, then I believe he's crossed into the Kruger National Park. The bull has headed west in an almost straight line, and he's crossed into the Kruger National Park. At 7,722 square miles, it's one of the largest and best protected national parks on the continent. Large elephants that frequent the park are well documented and protected by the biologists and park officials here. Perhaps they might be able to help identify our track. Dusk falls as we drive into Kruger. With every hour that passes, our bull moves further out of reach. An old friend and ranger in the park, Richard Sauri, has agreed to meet me in the morning. For now, we must wait. I remember as a young boy being fascinated by the story of the Magnificent Seven. Over 30 years ago, the biggest and most impressive elephant bulls in Kruger 
all with tusks weighing more than 100 pounds each, were individually named and based after the 1960s Hollywood film, were collectively called the Magnificent Seven. The public reaction was staggering, and when each of these great elephants died, it was decided to retrieve their tusks and skulls in order to display them. The Elephant Hall at Lataba Race Camp now holds the tusks of these seven great bulls. These truly are the pharaohs of the elephant world. But not all of them died peacefully. Zombo died in a hail of AK-47 bullets at the hands of a Mozambique poacher gang. His ivory was later recovered. Kambako was wounded by poachers and had to be mercifully killed. And Joao, having been wounded, was successfully tracked, darted, and treated by Kruger Park Rangers. That's three out of seven shot by AK-47s. Indeed, the same weapon that was used on the bull we found. The AK-47, a gas-operated automatic assault rifle. It is the most utilized firearm in guerrilla warfare. With over 100 million AK-47s in existence today, at least 20% of these are on the black market. With a pointed steel jacket, the bullet is designed to wound a human, not to kill an elephant. And it's not just the bad guys using weapons of war. It's early morning. Section Ranger Richard Sauri is at the shooting range with his field rangers. Similar to North America, rangers here are responsible for protecting wildlife. Not so similar, however, is the military training and weapons of war these rangers are versed in. Mm, things have changed, eh, the last five years. It's a war these days, eh? Richard and his team have one mission, to protect wildlife. These are the very people who work on the front line. Well-trained and equipped, they're not only a fighting force, but also the ears and eyes on the ground in the park. I'm hoping they can help us identify our elephant track and possibly even find our mystery elephant. Okay, copied. You say they arrested one and the others are running, eh? Good. Thank you. I'll get on that other radio. I'll listen for them. Cheers. Bye. So, Richard, we found this poached elephant. It's not a very big bull. As we looked around the site, it looked like a very big bull had been with him. I was just hoping that you would recognize the track. Yeah, look, I'll go through the database and uh, we can see if it matches any of them. Perfect. I've got a quite extensive database of all the big tuskers that I've observed. Perfect. That'll be great. It will be worth spending some time seeing if we can find a match. Besides their footprints, researchers recognize elephant bulls by two main features. The length and shape of their tusks and the tears and irregularity of their ears. Okay, so here's some of them. You see that mark there? That's the one you're sort of describing. I think it is him. Have we identified our elephant? My name is Ivan Carter, and I'm meeting with Section Ranger Richard Sauri to scour his database and see if an elephant in Mozambique, possibly wounded, crossed into Kruger National Park. The track Richard has shown me is virtually identical to the ones we've been tracking. I look over the information for this bull. It looks like he has remarkably clean ears. No major holes or tears. His tusks are huge, left a little more curved than the right. The thing, of course, that's most important to me is that his tracks are a match. Yo, no, I think this is definitely one, eh? Okay, so the... The area that you... Richard shows me on his map where his men reported just a day ago seeing a bull very similar to the one we are following headed west. It seemed nervous and was moving uncharacteristically fast. We need to go there and look at the track. If it is the same, we'll follow again on foot. I'm under pressure from a number of perspectives. The tracks were not fresh when we started. If the bull is indeed wounded, the wounds will be starting to fester and rot. The dread of being too late is constantly in the back of my mind. We head into the wild where the rangers told us to look. It's an area of vast Mapani forest. At this time of year, 
the elephants eat the leaves and bark of these oily seed trees. In this terrain, with all the grass and leaves, tracking is hard. And, big as they are, they can hide quite easily here. This will not be an easy task. Livy's help is vital if we're going to find this elephant in the area Richard identified. Sometimes the best way to spot elephants is to climb a tree for a better vantage point. From the treetop, Livy has seen three bulls, a large one and two smaller ones. The bull we are tracking is either one of them or has passed through. We ignore the tracks and try to get a good look. There's an elephant moving right in front of us here. He's just through the bush here, you can just see the top of his back. Let's just try and ease in here. We don't want to blow this, we've taken a lot of time getting to this point. I just saw a disc, I just saw a disc. We may have spotted him. We need to see the tusks and the ears to get a positive match. It's a large tusk, this could be him. have hairless tails. While this is encouraging, it's still not enough. I need to get closer. To avoid spooking the bull, we'll have to stay downwind, which limits our options. Two youngsters on one side of him, yeah. It's relaxed. We've been spotted. My name is Ivan Carter, and I'm on the trail of a large bull elephant, which we think may be wounded, somewhere in the Greater Kruger National Park. From a treetop in the Mapani, Livy spotted three elephant bulls. Oh, he has one of the Ascaris. Come on, big guy. Ascari means soldier or guard, and is used to refer to the young elephant bulls the teenagers of the elephant world. I just want to get through these guys gently and calmly. Often the eyes and the ears of the old bulls. They can be hot-headed and unpredictable. Okay, you just relax, you relax and you stay right there. We need to make our way through to see if the bull behind them is indeed the elephant we're looking for. If I walk in this direction, he comes and lets me know that I'm at the line. If I walk in this direction, he does the same. If I try and move in this direction, he's going to do that same thing again. Okay, no, he looks like he's moving off. You can tell by the angle of his tail that he's had enough of this. If he moves quietly in that direction, then we've really just got this guy to contend with. And all we've got to do is just wait here to get past. Okay, 
It's okay. Just want to get past you, big guy. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. At this point, really important to look big and firm. They're looking for any sign of weakness, that little confrontation. That's the point where if you back down from this, he may follow through, but in that kind of little confrontation, I'll keep my eyes on him all the time. We've also got to keep an eye on that guy. He's moved away pretending he's going, but he's still very aware. Like human teenagers, the Ascaris are unsure of their role. He has no interest in feeding on what he's breaking there. It's what we call displacement behavior. He's just got to have something to do because he's a little embarrassed. They're full of bluff and at the same time, they're curious as to what I am. Just his body language now, he's swishing his tail. Shows that he really doesn't care that I'm here. The only time he cares is when I want to get past him to see the big one. Carter's War is brought to you in part by Trigicon. Brilliant aiming solutions. My name is Ivan Carter, and I'm on the trail of a large bull elephant which we think may be wounded. The bull was attacked days ago and has since wandered off into an unknown territory in the Greater Kruger National Park. Livy and I have found a bachelor herd of elephants. I suspect one of them could be the elephant we're looking for. The two Ascaris have significantly slowed us down by blocking our path. It's time not wasted if the bull they're protecting is indeed the elephant we're searching for. dead end. This is not our elephant. <sighs> what a magnificent bull nonetheless. This large bull only has one tusk and even that tusk is not the size or shape we're after. <sighs> so the search continues. <sighs> As Livy and I continue to search for the bull, the environment changes. The terrain becomes far more open. The large trees disappear to be replaced by small scrubby mapani bushes. The soil is dry and the tracking very difficult. The good news is we found the elephant's track. There's two ways that four-legged animals walk. Some of them ambulate, which means that both legs on the same side move at the same time, like an elephant or a giraffe. And others do something called crosswalk, which means the front right moves at the same as the back left, or the front left moves at the same as the back right. Because the elephants ambulate, what that means is you can get a very good idea of how fast they're moving. This is the outline of the front of his foot 
his back foot has landed right on top of that front foot. What that means is he's moving very slowly. He's very calmly moving through this area. Probably from yesterday, the reason I can tell that is this little green herb here has been crushed to the degree that it's dry, but it's still a little bit soft. All very valuable stuff, particularly if you're trying to follow an elephant. These tracks are leading us down a highway created by thousands of footsteps from these giant animals. In this terrain, elephants can walk up to 50 miles a day. In dry areas like this, much of that big mileage is done commuting for water, which they need at the very least every two to three days. Water is always a source of conflict for elephants, a place where they gather and mingle briefly before drinking and melting back into the bush. We know we're getting closer to the source of the water as we've spotted a sudden increase in elephant activity. On the same path as we are using, a bull, probably in his early 30s, is coming to drink. It's amazing, these elephant bulls, as they stand here and they just watch. Elephants continue to grow in body mass their entire lives. An old bull will have a huge broad head, very thick trunk and a saggy, thick looking body. This bull looks to be middle-aged. He's just trying to smell us, just trying to see us. A recent study from satellite collared elephants shows that they can walk as much as 6,000 miles in a year. That's an average of 16 miles a day. Our bull's track goes right past this guy. He's coming on exactly the same path that our bull's gone out on. My name is Ivan Carter, and I'm on the trail of a large bull elephant, which we think may be wounded, somewhere in the Greater Kruger National Park. We're getting closer, but there's still obstacles. Whew, that's impressive. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Sorry to worry you, old boy. Sorry to disturb you. Just want to get past you. What an incredible animal. You can see his tail is already relaxed. He's only about 80 yards and already he's relaxed. He started feeding again. So our bull's carried on out here. So now that we've got around this guy, we can get back on these tracks. You know, very often what'll happen like that is an elephant will come in what he's trying to do is just show some muscle. He's trying to look as big as possible. He shows his muscle. He really doesn't want to, you know, run over you, but he wants you to think that he's going to. And, and man, it's just an impressive deal. He comes up to you, his ears are out, his body's looking as big as he possibly can, kicks up some dust. And then there's this kind of moment of confrontation, which is, you know, he's thinking, what are you going to do? That's the point where if you run away, that might be the last run you do. If all of that goes well, they back off and go back to their daily business. Hopefully now that he's gone around us, we'll be able to get back on our tracks and find our bull. In the last three years alone, 100,000 elephants have died at the hands of poachers across the African continent. That's one every 15 minutes. My journey began in the woodlands of southern Mozambique, where I investigated some circling vultures, a common sight where elephant poaching is concerned. I discovered a dead elephant, brutally poached for his tusks, and upon further investigation of the scene, realized that he was not alone. Gunshots were fired, and a second elephant ran off, possibly injured. We followed his tracks, and with the help of the rangers of the Kruger National Park and their database of known elephants, discovered our track matched an elephant they had on record. Starting in the Mapani woodlands, we have now emerged into the open plain. We've encountered young bulls, teenagers of the elephant world, and found levity in a dangerous situation. But we haven't seen the elephant. The elephant with, indeed, very large ivory, one side bigger than the other. We're getting closer but there's still obstacles. 
You know, one of the great things about this particular area is there's not a lot of water. So these elephants will get onto these paths that'll lead them down to water. So once you know your bull is on this path, what we can do is just watch the sides of the path to make sure that he doesn't get off the path. And we know we can actually usually catch up. The negative of that though, is that these paths are used by all the elephant in the area. Any other elephants that have joined that track behind him have obliterated his track, which makes it very, very difficult to find the tracks. Leaves us in a bit of a quandary as to what to really do, but I think this is the only thing we can do at this stage. We've made it to a watering hole along a riverbed. I see numerous elephants, young and old, but none that match the description of the elephant we're looking for. We're on the edge of this big, wide, sandy riverbed, the second riverbed that this elephant's come across. As amazing as it is to see this huge variety and volume of wildlife along this river, it's pretty tough on our tracking because they're all using the same pathways that our bull is using, but I still believe that the track is going up in this direction. We've got this big herd of buffalo in front of us, and as they're becoming aware of us, I think that they're gonna probably run in front of us, and that's bad. Every animal that walks over that track makes it that much harder to follow. So I'm thinking the elephant is carrying on in this direction. He's crossed down into this river. He's crossed the second riverbed now. Now we've got a decision to make. We can either go straight down on this elephant's tracks and run the risk of these buffalo thundering off in front of us, disturbing him and making him run again. We can go all the way around, hoping to not disturb the buffalo, but running the risk of losing his track. That's a pretty tough decision. My name is Ivan Carter, and I'm on the trail of a large bull elephant which we think may be wounded, somewhere in the Greater Kruger National Park. It's become a personal quest to find this animal. We're getting closer, but I'm unsure how long he'll remain here. Time is of the essence. Now we've got a decision to make. We can either go straight down on this elephant's tracks and run the risk of these buffalo thundering off in front of us, disturbing him and making him run again. We can go all the way around hoping to not disturb the buffalo, but running the risk of losing his track. That's a pretty tough decision. As much as we want to push forward, the buffalo herd is in our way. If the elephant is close in front and they run off, he'll run with them. We choose to travel the long way round. It'll be up to Livy's tracking expertise to pick up the bull on the other side of the herd. This is not the first time we've shared a difficult task. I consider Livy one of my closest friends. His tracking skills and his overall bush sense is incredible. We are now nearing the private land area called the APNR, the Association of Private Nature Reserves. Although this area remains private, it falls within the Greater Kruger National Park. There he is. But this is his track here. Yeah, this is the one. Livy, this thing's close here. Earlier on, I mentioned how important it was that we identified not just an elephant track, but this particular elephant's track and some distinguishing features. And so here's exactly the cracks that we are after. I'm not sure just how far behind him we are, but it's pretty close. Livy's expertise has paid off yet again. From the wetness of the sand and the well-defined print, it's clear that this track is fresh. But as we continue to search for further sign, we meet with increasingly difficult terrain. The dry rock, hot from the day's sun, has dried any additional tracks. Just when I thought that, you know, we had such a lot of excitement right there, I, I just thought we were so close, and now all of a sudden, I have no idea how far these rocks go. I've got no idea. I don't even know where to, yeah, I don't even know where to start here. You only just have to start from scratch. I have no idea how big this rock is, but we'll have to walk around the edge till we try and find the track. Tomorrow morning, just do that big circle and just with a bit of luck, we'll find something. Yeah, see? Yeah. Yeah, Here's what's happened. What, what Livy's telling me 
Livy, so you say the elephant walked here and his feet were wet? Yes. Then he's come up here and he's slipped here a little bit. You can see how wide this track is, all the way from here, all the way to here. That's just the size of this track is what tells us it's the same elephant. Then he's gone on up here and he's slipped here, trying to get purchase on this rock. Again, you can see here's the edge of these scratch marks. Maybe we haven't lost him after all. Carter's War would like to thank the following people and organizations. Without their help, this program would not be possible. My name is Ivan Carter. What began with the discovery of the mutilated remains of an elephant bull has led me on a journey through the heart and the realities of modern day elephant conservation. The bull we are following that may even be wounded has become an obsession. It's become a personal quest to find this animal. I feel we may be close, very close. This is very, very fresh. Actually, there's pee still dripping off this branch here. This dropping's warm in a chisa chai. You can see it's how fresh this is. You can see from the texture that this is an old bull. Their teeth wear out and they lose the ability to actually chew their food. And you can see there's whole leaves and stuff in this. Maybe this is the one, Livy. Come, let's go. Slowly, eh? slowly, be careful. The freshness of the urine and droppings indicate we are finally close to this elephant. This is by far the freshest sign of this elephant yet. He could be anywhere nearby. There's only one way to know for sure. We must push forward. If this indeed is our elephant, then we must identify him by the characteristics the database described. Large tusks, his left side a little more curved than the right. Then we need to check and see if he's okay. We're halfway there. This elephant looks absolutely fine. There's no injury at all, but he may run off, which poses a problem. So we're gonna have to just take this very, very carefully. effort. I don't really want him to hear me going across here. The thick, tall reeds that are pretty spiky. There was mud bathing down here, so it's either a pool or a flowing river, and I can't really tell. Here's the track right here. Look at this. Look at this thing. Look at the size of this thing. Let's ease up here. We're going to go slowly up this game trail. Get through that thick grass and hopefully he's going to be just on top of that ridge. Yeah, let's do that. It's a good sign. He is close. Very close. We saw him mud bathing. This is where he's walked past this tree. This is the mud from his body on the tree here. It's just a testament to his size. Just look how high this goes up there. What a huge, huge elephant. This is a giant, an elephant to rival the magnificent seven bulls, whose lives and bloodline led to the foundation of elephant conservation. Here he is, here he is. Oh my goodness, here he is. What I think we're gonna do is move a little bit in this direction. He's slowly feeding across there. The last thing we wanna do is disturb this elephant. He's gonna feed across this open and we're gonna get a fantastic view of him.
This elephant is a living legend. His massive ears are remarkably intact, rare for such an old bull, and his unique tusks match our description. The left more curved than the right. I find no signs of injury or abuse. This is our bull, safe and unharmed. My greatest fear is that I'll not get to stand on the same ground as an elephant bull like this and share a moment like this with my children. That is my greatest fear. As I look into the eyes of this giant, he stares back at me. When an elephant like this takes a step towards you, <laughs> you respectfully take a step back. I've learned a lot from the journey to find this elephant. I've learned of the horror of a fresh elephant carcass, its face hacked off, killed for the value of its tusks. I've learned that despite this poaching epidemic that's raging across Africa, more today than ever before, there are indeed some of these great tuskers still alive and well and roaming free, protected by passionate people fighting on their behalf. But more than anything, I learned for the first time in my life what it felt like to walk up to and be acknowledged by a bull of this stature, a humbling experience indeed. If we all work together and give these people on the front lines the support they need, perhaps one day these giant elephants will once again roam freely and widely across this great continent.